lot of questions that keep coming up right i have consolidated those questions and i'll be covering those questions in the session and we'll go over the live sessions as well right so we will try to answer all those in this session today uh, so to start with uh, some of the new users right how do i start the application right? so uh, first thing is you you get your login credentials you get your access to the vm where you have your shortcut for the trade flow and your shortcut for the microsoft edge right? so this is the microsoft edge so we first open the microsoft edge and you see a shortcut on the top uh, a bookmark on the top which is for you to generate the token right now you log in into the your zeroda account right if this is for people who are using zeroda for people who are using finvasia you, they don't have to do this step right you generate the token the same has been shared in the user guide as well right so this is the first step that needs to be done every day and then copy the request token and put that into the trade flow application before you select on your account right? so that's the first basic step the same has been shared as part of the uh, user guide Okay. Now, once you've selected your account, your once you've entered your token and you've entered your uh, selected, let's see, let me just go back to okay, the last application. Okay, try to open the application. Oh, yeah. So, because I have already done the, this once, I don't have to enter the request token. Uh, my account already comes up. All I have to do is select the index. We trade, we allow all three indexes. So you can trade in Nifty, Bank Nifty, Fin Nifty. Right? Uh, the number of all the expiries which are available from the broker are visible here. So you can choose any index and any expiry combination. Okay, one second. Okay, yeah. Okay, one question. Uh, people are asking where can I ask questions. You can send the the WhatsApp number on our Twitter handle. I'll put that on the chat as well. That is the number where you can ask send your questions, and we will answer all your questions right one by one. Uh, but most likely, I'll be I have consolidated all the questions that we've received so far right over a period of six months, uh, and we'll try to cover all those questions. So please try to uh, patiently listen in if you can. Uh, so the first question, right? Uh, can I trade multiple accounts from the trade flow application you currently can trade a single account at per instance so if you have single subscription you can select the account which is linked to that subscription you if you have multiple you'll see multiple accounts showing up here uh, whenever you launch you can select your account that you want to trade in then select the index and the expiry and click on start so to answer the question where can i trade multiple accounts at a time yes you can but you will need multiple subscription for that one subscription per account uh, so once I've selected the account, can I trade multiple indexes at a time? Yes, you can. Again, this is per subscription. Right? If your subscription allows you to open multiple instances, you can open one instance and select a Nifty instrument. You can then open another in instance which where you can select Bank Nifty. So to show you an, an example here, I already have two instances. Right? So I can open on one on the left, which will be just dock it here. So I'm doing bank nifty here and let's say we're doing fin nifty here so for the same account i can trade multiple indexes at the same time i can monitor and configure each of these independently right so that answers whether can i trade multiple indexes at a time yes you can and can i trade multiple expiries at a time yes you can do that as well right so here i can do bank nifty this is current week the next week i can trade here so if i click on start i'm trading the 23rd expiry in this on the left account i'm trading the 16th that is the current expiry so that way you have option to trade in multiple indexes at a time and the configuration will only work for that combination of index and expiry so whatever you set here is applicable for the combination of account index and expiry so all three options are available for you to choose based on your subscription right can you open multiple or single right? so some of our users have multiple accounts they can they get an option to select the second account and then select the index and expiry so that's on how to select uh, multiple accounts and how do how do we support multiple accounts do we support multiple indexes and do we support multiple expiries right so the answer to all three is yes now uh, what about fin nifty right so that's a question that comes up fin nifty in zerodha 
right i'll specifically talk about for now uh, in zerota it only supports nrml right so by default if i select fin nifty you will see let me do a 28th right just to show you and click on start my index is fin nifty here if i select bank nifty and i do a, a start my index is bank nifty here right? so based on whatever your selection is the index changes now coming on to fin nifty specifically for fin nifty since there are certain restrictions by the broker itself right we by default on so i'll just show it here on the left in fin nifty you'll see a limit order and nrml orders Right. Some brokers are not restricting NRML. Some brokers are not restricting limit orders. Right. So based on what your broker allows, you can check or uncheck these boxes. The freedom is yours. If I leave this as limit, we are basically saying that all the orders that will be sent from the trade flow application will be a limit order. Now, the next question is, how do you calculate the limit price? And what happens if there's a huge jump? Right. Now, the system calculates the price every single time for every single order that it sends in case of a limit order. So it adds a buffer to the last price and then places a limit order. So far, we have users who are using it for more than 60,000 quantities, and there has been no issues with the execution for that matter in terms of whether my order got executed because it was a limit or not. Right? So uh, another detailed technical uh, step on this that we've done was the price is calculated and the buffer is calculated based on the last price. So the buffer is also very dynamic. If you're selling a one rupee option versus a 500 rupee option, the buffer that gets added is calculated based on a few parameters. To name a few is the LTP and the last bid and ask size and the quantities. Right? So it is. that's why it's very, very dynamic and that's why the chances of missing your order not getting executed is extremely low. Right? So that's how FinNifty is supported. In addition, because uh, some brokers do not allow uh, for fin nifty given it is an nrml right you are not allowed to buy the hedges before you sell the position so in order to support that the system also sends a sell order before a buy order so it is going to send your sell position before buying the hedge against it right so that your order, your order does get executed so in order to show that it will take a position and then we'll talk about that as well here now, that's the difference between Fin Nifty. If I show you Bank Nifty here, you will not see the option. Right? There is, these two are grayed out, right? You can't select them. In some cases, you won't even so, uh, see them. So this is something that I've been working on. So that's why it's currently grayed out. So, so Bank Nifty and Nifty, all the orders that are sent from the system are market orders. And, and we by default support MIS. So for MIS orders, Zeruda is okay to buy the hedges, far off hedges, right? In case of an MIS. So here the buy order is sent before the sell order. So uh, the system automatically adapts to what your configuration is. Right? If you have selected a fin nifty and you have selected NRML limit, the prices and the execution changes. If you selected bank nifty or nifty, the order in which the execution happens is also according to whether it is NRML or MIS. Right? Now that's on the differentiation between how can we support fin nifty and what are the changes that we do right? now moving on to a single i'll just close one instance and we will leave one instance open which is a bank nifty for now right? i'm not doing a paper trade i will just show what is my position here i haven't taken any positions this morning because i wanted to show with start with the blank slate and go over dashboard right? so just to start i had think i just to test it out i had taken a position in nifty yeah so let's just exit these two okay we'll just exit these two we'll just exit. so i have no positions now right so let's go to bank nifty let me close for nifty here and we'll go to bank nifty okay sorry it down somewhere else and yeah Okay, so this is my bank nifty. Uh, if you have any questions, you can send it to the WhatsApp number. The number is listed on our Twitter page uh, and I will try to answer all the questions, right? So the first thing is general configurations, right? Before general configuration, the stop button. A stop button is basically a way of saying stop the automation. It doesn't square off your positions. It doesn't send any order when you click on stop. A stop is basically if I have, let's say I'll show you an example here. 
I have uh, automation that is selected. If I click on stop, the automation, any automation that you have checked will get unselected. So basically what you're telling the system is stop the automation. That's all. Do not touch any of my positions through automation. I can do it manually or uh, so in, in short, you're stopping automation. You're not, you're not exiting any position. You're not taking any position. You're not doing any adjustment when you click on stop. The way to close an application is through the top right corner. Right? This is like any Windows application where you click on the top right corner and you can close an application. Right? So that's how the application can get can be closed. An application, if you still want it to be running, but you've decided, okay, I want to stop all the automations, I'll do it manually, then click on stop automation. It will continue to work where you can then manage or then turn on automation later on. Right? Now that's on the stop. Right? Uh, you'll see you can't change your account you can't change your index and you can't change your expiry once you've selected we've loaded all the data right for you for this combination let's say if you want to change this right, you want to switch from a bank nifty to a nifty uh, if your subscription doesn't allow you to open a second instance then you can close the application launch it again and then select nifty instead of bank nifty so for people who have a single instance uh, allowed in their subscription you can switch between a nifty and bank nifty now and uh, start the application once you've taken let's say bank nifty and then closed your position you can come back and open nifty here and then it will still work for nifty so that's for people only with one subscription or one one instance if you have if you are on a six month plan which is a five plus one you have access to three instances at a time. You can open, like I had opened Fin Nifty, you can open multiple instances at a time. Right? So this covers the basics of, okay, how do I use the Trade Pro application? Right? Now coming on to what is it about, right? What, what does it support? So, so uh, I'll, talk, I'll talk about the topics first and then show you how it can be achieved. Right? So the first, the most painful topic right now in the market is a stop loss hunting. Right. I've I take a position. I've taken a, a position of let's say sold twenty rupees put option. I put a stop loss of thirty rupees, and the moment market starts falling, the thirty is breached, and then it goes back to twenty again within a matter of seconds. Right. So and my stop loss was hit, and, and I'm out of the position. Right? Now there is a way to protect yourself from a situation like this, where for a fraction of seconds the position is the the LTP has spiked, and then it has gone back to its normal state you have something called as a weight ticker a weight ticker is basically a way to protect you from a stop loss hunting right where you're saying instead of putting a stop loss of 30 right a hard stop loss we're saying that if the 30 is breached and is breached consecutively for five price updates right so if let's say market goes from the that same put from 20 goes to 29.95 then goes to 30 and then comes back to 29.95 it will not execute any orders it will only execute orders if 30 LTP is breached and is breached consecutively for five times. So if four times it had stayed above 30 and then again goes back below 30, then the counter is reset. It has to consecutively stay for five price updates in order to execute that automation logic. So that's all for, for uh, stop loss hunting to protect yourself from stop loss hunting. Second is, uh, Free trades, right? How do I ensure that? Okay, it's an automation system. If I take a position and suddenly there's a free trade, how can I try to protect myself from those free trades? So there's a logic of max price. A max price basically tells you that you're telling the system do not buy as an option seller. So this tool is mostly for option sellers, where as an option seller, I put something let's say for two hundred rupees. I don't want the system to buy anything if it goes above five hundred rupees. So if there was a sudden movement, I don't want the system to take any buy orders, which are more than 500 rupees on the LTP, then the max price is what is can be used for this kind of logic. So do make sure if you're doing, if you, let's say you're selling a straddle, which is at LTP of 400, 400, then a max price of 500 would not make too much of sense because a slight price movement, your price will go above 500. You may have all the automations here, but this is like the this takes the topmost priority because you're saying uh, do not buy anything which is more than 500 rupees at the current ltp okay? so you can then change it to let's say 800 so this is dynamic now i'm telling if anything uh, any of my position if i'm trying to square off if i'm trying to buy do not buy if the ltp is more than 800 rupees right so that's a way 
for us to protect in case of a free, a free trade. Okay. Then the uh, for people who are dealing with larger quantities, we there is a restriction by CME, uh, by NEC saying that this is the maximum quantity that you can sell. Right? So for uh, in a single order, so a single order 900 is set for bank nifty okay? now if i show that for fin nifty it's going to be a different quantity now this is an order slicer what i'm telling the system is whenever i'm selling some quantity do a slicing and do a slicing for by 900 so let's do a paper trade and i'll show that in action first so uh, you can forget about all the other features for now i'll talk about them in a minute we'll just do a 9000 We're doing a 9,000 quantity of a straddle with a hedge of 13 and 30. And I'll do an enter now. I'm doing a paper trip, so that's okay. So it has to calculate for 9,000 quantity, what was this, right? So it has done, it has taken this position. If you can see, my bank nifty straddle is around 41,600, 41,600 with the hedges of around 30, 30, right? So in the hedges, I'll talk about the logic of how the hedges are calculated. Yeah. One second, just give me one second. Okay, yeah, that's good. So you'll see the order slicing here is of 900, 900, right? Now, if I wanna show you, how this order slicing works so we actually punched in 40 orders okay? and the punching happened started at 12.06.48 and it took seven seconds right, to enter a position which is 9000 quantity straddle uh, with hedges right so that's the the power where you didn't have to select the strikes you didn't have to select the price you just did a, a minus one minus one and it entered now talking about the order slicing now I could change this to an order slicing of 300. I'll say, I'll just refresh this so that it's cleaner. And we'll now enter the same straddle again. Okay. And we'll say, okay, do it for 2000. I can type, yeah, 2200 quantity. This time the order slicing is 300. So if I click on enter now, enter. now you'll see right, that the order started from 300. So the slicer, we still punched in 2200 quantity, but because of the order slicing, my orders went in a slices of 200 and the last is 100, 100 right, on the edges because it, the total quantity was 2200 which is being set through the order slicer. So this is for order slicing. Now, move by to, uh, number of adjustments is basically the number of adjustments that happen in the system. Right? There's an adjustment counter right here. Every time a system does an adjustment. So for example, if I do an adjustment right now by clicking here of move away, I'm moving the full quantity away to from 41,600 to 41,700. It is it has moved it right again while moving it has done the order slicing uh, all my orders were sent right it shows me the current pnl and on top of it if i did a manual movement that's why the adjustment counter didn't increase the adjustment counter increases when the system takes an adjustment when the system makes an adjustment so it is purely the counter for you to use when you're doing a fully automated and you want to make sure that after certain adjustments the system should either warn or stop right? this is where the maximum number of adjustments can protect you so I'll, I'll give you a use case where maybe you made a wrong such a wrong automation setting right and you ended up in a loop where one automation says move away the other logic says come closer after a certain period of time because it is in a loop and you uh, maybe you're not looking at it right uh, you want us automation to stop that's where you can protect using the max adjustments so that's on the max adjustments move by two strike uh, option of moving right so when an adjustment happens should i move by one strike or two strike when i say one strike or two strike for 41600 since it's a bank nifty you're moving by either 100 positions 
which is if you move away you're moving to 41500 if you're moving by two strikes you're moving to 41400 so you're basically moving by either one strike or two strike it has nothing to do with the price it has purely to do with the strikes at what strike you are what is uh, strike which is next to the current and another one which is uh, leaving one strike um, gap right and moving to another one so let's show one in bank nifty in fin nifty or let's let me show nifty so in bank nifty because these are pockets of hundreds in case of nifty it is pockets of let's just enter here we'll do a strangle here as well so i straddle here as well this one and this one and we'll just on enter okay, that's fine we'll do an enter now so here you can see we've entered a 7900 straddle 300 quantities now since nifty has uh, strikes of 50 it's so 17900 to 17950 and then 1800 18000 sorry similarly when you're coming closer it's 17850 or 17800 so it's moved by a single strike or moved by two strike right? now if i show you this in action if i and this is only applicable when you're doing automation right because on a grid you have the option you can choose which strike to move to right but when the automation is happening is when you're telling the system that whenever the automation adjustment happens the adjustment should happen by a single strike or by two strikes so that way it it is again as, as soon as i uncheck this it is any adjustment that happens from now on will happen by one strike versus if i check this now and if the movement happens then it will happen for two strikes by two strikes the last is exit hedges this has been recently added you might not find this in the user manual where you have an option to keep the hedges or you have an option to exit the hedges so if i leave this as checked when we are exiting through uh, uh, um, exit pnl or through exit now option it will exit the hedges if i have this checked it will not exit the hedges if i have this unchecked right? so let me show that in action as well i have hedges here right now i will uncheck exit hedges and i click on enter so now it's only going to sell the uh, square of this sold position hedges will still remain there i can again decide to enter okay, by clicking on minus one minus one right and we'll do again 2200 and we'll enter this position so this time if i click exit hedges and i click on exit now this time it's going to exit along with the hedges so you have an option to either leave the hedges or exit the hedges and that is through this checkbox so this covers the general configuration that is up applicable all across the application now once let's say you you configured this for the given day you can always save that right? so for a wednesday this is something that i want to do every day i can just click on save and this configuration is saved for wednesday i have an option to select the the day of the week and then load that specific configuration let's say i want to load something that I've, i want i want to follow everything uh, same for every day i can just Go and save it as under one day and keep loading it for that day so as soon as i click on load for this it will load for that specific day okay. i don't have any configuration saved so that's why you won't see any changes but i can do this in action where i can go and save this as 400 for tuesday right i'll come back to wednesday and load it this goes back to 300 because for wednesday i had saved this as 300 if i come back to tuesday and click on load this goes changes back to 400 yeah. So that gives you an idea of what the configuration, this configuration actually saves this portion of load and save is only applicable for general configurations. So this is applicable all across the application now. Moving on to entry options. Right? So there are multiple ways to enter in trade flow. Right? Like I said, the order of the execution will depend on the index that you've selected and whether you're doing an MIS or an RML. In case of an MIS, if the broker allows, we buy the hedges before selling your position before the sell orders if it's an nrml then we send the sell order because the brokers don't allow buying hedges in nrml before selling and so i think finvasia doesn't have that problem but zeroda does have that problem even xts doesn't have that problem but zeroda specifically has problems so in zeroda 
If you're doing an NRML, the system will do a sell order before the buy order. Now, you have a few choices. You can choose to enter by margin, right? So currently it is showing the margin that I have. I can choose to do by a quantity, right? So like we were doing it right now, we want to, we know, okay, this is the quantity that I want to enter at the start of the uh, application, right? So I can choose to do 2,200. I can do a straddle by doing minus one. Uh, and let's do, so for call, I'm saying I want to take a straddle for a put. I, I want to tell the price. I want to enter look for prices look for strikes which are around 200 rupees buy hedges which are let's say 30 and 20 enter this 2200 quantity by looking at for a call check where the straddle is right? based on where the atm is right not the straddle right uh, where the spot is try to get the strike which is closer to the spot for a put i'm telling the price look for strikes which are closer to 200 rupees and for hedges also, I'm giving this. Okay, the question, can I take a position without the hedges? Yes, I leave this as zero. I don't have to buy this. If I click now, it, I'm basically taking this position without the hedges. Now, can I take with hedges? Yes, you can, you can take it with hedges. Well, can I take only one side of hedge? Yes, you can do that as well. You just do 30 here and enter now. And, and set the quantity sorry my bad uh, minus one hundred and thirty okay. we'll just do this so now we're not entering the put side hedge we are just entering the call side hedge right so you have full flexibility of entering based on what you enter okay. now a lot of people do partial entry in the morning and then want to add more to quantity so let's assuming let's say you had a margin of one cr you entered for 50 lakhs now you want to enter another uh remaining 50 lakh right and you know okay i can enter uh, 1200 quantity right all you have to do is just enter 1200 if you want to add to the same position just click on enter now as soon as i click on enter now we are adding 1200 position to your existing positions right? so this way i can keep adding multiple times to my existing position by just selecting the quantity clicking on enter now leaving everything to zero Leaving everything to zero is telling the system that I want to add 1200 quantity to my existing position. Okay? Just go and click on add enter now and it will enter. Okay? So this way you've entered the same position, uh, added more to the same position. Okay? Let me just exit this. Okay. So now uh, let's just refresh. Okay. Without before refreshing, I want to now take, I've taken something which is uh, a strangle. I want to add a different position now i want to sell a strangle which is for 50 and 50 and this time i want to take a hedge also how much do i want to add i want to add for let's say 275 quantity so my existing position is already there and now i'm telling the system add 275 look for strikes which are around 50 ltp on call put and hedges of 44 i click on enter now it is adding 275 here you can see 275 275 and hedges right so you can enter multiple uh, options yes you can enter into multiple strategies a strangle a straddle and condo butterfly uh, directional i can just i can just enter one leg right? i want to enter a 3000 quantity of just call i am doing an enter now and i have entered 3300 of just 100 rupee call so if even if you are a directional uh, 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 somebody who uses strangle somebody who sells straddle you have the option to have any of that either through defining the price itself right now i don't i don't know how much i can use right how much quantity is allowed then use the margin option right uh, in fin in finvesia in xts they don't they haven't provided a margin calculator so for people who are using xts and or finvesia they will only have a option to define quantity right now if you have if you're using zero the you can choose how much margin to use so for example i'll just refresh this now i have this much margin i don't know how much quantity i can sell so i will just select the margin option and i'll say okay i want to use 27 lakhs and enter a straddle without hedges now it is the system's responsibility to find out what is the quantity system says 450 quantity of the straddle is can be bought for 47 it has taken that position with order slicing so if you see my order slicing for 400, that's why you will see a 400 and a 50. So for people who are dealing with 
uh, capital where they're not sure okay how much quantity is allowed right and they want to ensure they use the maximum benefit of the margin you can always just select the full margin and let the system do calculation and punch orders for you right? so that's the margin option now all this can be done through a time based entry as well right in a paper trade so i'll do a live trade now i'll just close this and right? we were all doing all this in paper trade right now so let's go and check how is our paper trade right now we have nothing here right because it was all of it was paper trade now we'll take a live trade let me close this so when i'm switching between a live trade and a paper trade i have to close the application and then start a new instance this time i'm going to take a bank nifty and i'm going to select this and i'll leave the uncheck paper trade is unchecked now i want to enter i want to enter all of my margin and i want to enter through paddle of minus 1 minus 1 and i'm going to do a 30 in 30 so let's say we want to enter right now it is 1231 we'll do a 12 31 we'll do a 32 21 and we'll do an enter now okay so what i'm telling the system now is i've defined right so every morning when let's say you want you want to come in you can set at 9 15 27 second this is the position this is what the system should look for at 12 32 21 second it needs to go and find out where the market was based on that because i've said straddle it's going to look at the atm and sell that atm along with the hedges based on the margin that i've asked the system to do so as you can see the orders are getting punched so did i say yeah it is yeah, it is adding these let's go back to maya and we will show you the orders as well so this is what it has used so we'll see we have 34 lakhs now four it is not going to sell let me sell this is another important point for people who so i do get this messages a lot of times okay i do have my margin still there why is it not taking position right? uh, it's live in my account i can show you because we've collected a premium of four lakhs right? that four lakhs is not available for you to sell more right it's basically that's the premium from the option that we've sold if you look at the position there is a little skew right now if you don't want the skew where the, this should match exactly you have to lower uh, order slicing okay? the reason is if you see it started with 450 450 right so this is the buy buy right so this is an mis so you can see there is a buy order buy order then a sell order right we'll show the same here on the order screen if you go down this is my bank nifty yeah this one right here at 12 32 25th right we had said 21st the four seconds were utilized in finding calculating and all the logic that we do after the, those five seconds or three seconds is where it started punching 450 of my hedges then sold position then hedges then sold position at one point of time you'll see my order got rejected right so around here a 350 quantity was rejected if i show you the reason for that rejection is insufficient margin now the margin requirement changes very dynamically also when you use a calculator it is not a absolute value it will always change because if you sell 1200 quantity first of a put and then try to sell uh, 1200 quantity of a call you will realize that the first 1200 quantity of a put took 80 percent of your margin and then when you add 1200 quantity of the call it would take it would have taken only the last remaining 20 percent so the, the logic is complicated i'm not going to go into that logic right now but the idea is the system tried to sell 350 because zero the margin calculator told us that we can sell 1700 that's how we then tried to push the order it didn't let me sell 350 it didn't let me sell all the way if you see the system tried to sell it was able to sell the last 100 so i didn't have to worry now in order to not have this scenario right so a lot of people say i want exactly balanced position then one option that you have in the system is order slicing so during an entry you should change so i'll exit this now uh, as we speak i'll just show exit now as well i'm gonna exit the hedges as well or i'm not gonna exit the hedges now i'm gonna just oh okay let me exit the hedges also. end up paying charges that's okay right, so i'm now again exiting with a slicing of 450. so i've exited all the position again the order slicer works here and 
my if you see my orders again it is 450 450 and the last leg was 100 and 350 right? now to answer the question how do i make sure that it is very well balanced reduce the order slicing if i do the order slicing to 200 right? now what you're saying is the, the chances of your rejection are less and the chances of your quantity being balanced is high right uh, let's try that again we'll do again the same minus one minus one i think we said 20 20 and we will do an enter now right so oh, sorry minus one. we'll just do an enter now okay one more point to note auto entry is actually disabled right now the reason it is disabled is you can't select a date in past right you have to select something which is in future so if i change this to 12 30 7 it got enabled i can check this and it is there right so if you see something disabled there is a reason why it is disabled either the values that you entered is incorrect and that's the reason it is disabled okay. so that's a sign that something is, is some of the value that you've entered is incorrect okay so that gives me i'll just you can see now you can see the order slicing working on 200 quantities i'll end up punching a lot more orders but the balance between the position will be much closer as now you can see it is 1700 and 1675 and 1500 so if i change this to 25 then it will be exactly matching but i will end up giving a lot more orders so you have to have a fine balance if uh, you can then click on add 100 and try right for example it has this logic where we're trying with 100 it has not it is not allowing we try another 100 here it is not going to allow it as of now so I've, I've utilized maximum margin here main reason there is a slight difference is because it will not allow you to use the margin which is to the option premium that you calculate right okay i'm gonna take a break and i'll try and see what are the questions here and then we'll come back to our position and see how to manage so this is the entry right so we've seen all the multiple options of how to enter a posi uh, position right uh, i'll grab a glass of water take a five minute break and come back and then we'll continue on uh, okay before i do that let's just look at uh, we'll, we'll finish the entry portions and then we'll look at the uh, exit portion and then we'll look at the automation right so we saw time-based entry, multiple entries in multiple strikes, enter, enter in straddle, enter without hedges, with hedges, all that is available, all is all that is possible. Right? Exiting also, you have a time-based exit and you have an exit now option where you can exit your position completely. You can choose to exit your hedges or leave your hedges as it is based on the checkbox that you've selected. If I leave it as exit hedges, it's going to exit the hedges as well. If I uncheck this, then it will leave my hedges and it will only square off my sold positions. Right? I have an option to convert to NRML. Now, this is for people who, are, who want to take the position overnight. Right? You've taken some position into MIS because Bank Nifty Nifty, we are currently working only in MIS. But you want to carry some position overnight. You can do so by trying to convert this. Now, be very mindful. If I, I will show you that here in live as well because this is, again, some of the users have complained quite a bit around this, that this doesn't work. Uh, it will work if you have margin, right? So I will try to convert this. I'll show you. I'm trying to convert, let's say, 275 quantity. Right? I do get an insufficient fund. Right? Uh, I'll try to convert this now from 175. I still don't get it. Right? I'll try and do it with 75. No, no luck, right? Now, one way to bypass this is I can try to convert or i can square off certain positions i can try and just square off let's say 175 of this now if i try to convert since i have slightly higher margin than what i used to have i'll try to convert 200 Still no luck. now this is something that is very tricky because you have to find out how much margin is there for you to actually sell let's try all the way to 25. okay so 25 i was able to convert right now i'll convert back to ms so i have 1500 
okay let's try to convert this from our application as you can see zero that didn't even allow me to do it with 100 right now i'll try to do it with 75 here so the order slicer also works when you're trying to convert from mis to an right? uh, for people in finvasia or xts that option is currently not available i will be adding that option for finvasia and xcs as well very soon but for now for zero that right the order slicer that you select and the same logic will apply for Finvasia and for XTS where the order slicer will determine how we try to convert it. Right? So now I have 1500. Also, if you will note, I made the changes in my guide account. It got reflected here. I it, I can now see 1500, 1500 quantity. So whatever you do from the trade flow application is also visible on the kite app and whatever you do on the kite mobile or web is also visible here for the same index instrument and MIS or NRML based on what you've selected. Right? So let's try and convert this to NRML. It's going to prompt me. It's going to start. If it stops instantaneously, you can click on refresh to check. Or if you go back here, you'll see my position hasn't changed. Now I'm going to try and do this by 25 because I know that 25 had worked. And do convert. Now, you'll see that it is it is converting if this mouse cursor is changing to a circle and a rotating circle that basically means that it is trying to convert it is taking its time because obviously we're trying to convert it one by one let's refresh here and see if it has started conversion as you can see it has started the conversion 425 quantity 450 quantity right it is converting all my mis slowly into nrml it is doing so in 25, in a lot of 25 each. Right? So you have to give enough time because each of this is going to Zeroda API. And after a certain period of time, Zeroda may actually start complaining, saying that you're sending way too many requests in a second, right? which is more likely to be the case in this case. Let's see. It is still converting. Right? After a certain period of time, you can see there's 400, 425, 625, 625 still remaining. I'll refresh this yeah, and we'll go back. It didn't convert all of it. Zeroda may have complained about the number of requests that we're sending, or it could be about the margin. So I hope they haven't blocked my account. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I can see 1075 got converted. The only which are MIS is visible. 625 here. I'll just order this by product. Right. So you can see this is what is remaining, and this is the same that has been shown here. We'll try to convert one more time. We'll see if it lets us do it. Yeah, it is. And that's how you can completely convert your position. Right? So it is tricky because uh, do not be not sending orders here. You don't pay for the brokerage here. But because you have to have sufficient margin in order to do this, you have to find a sweet spot. It is possible that it is again rejected. Because we, we can't convert till Zeroda allows us. At the end of the day, we are working with a provider, a broker. If the broker allows, we are able to. Right? So if it stops, I know it is painful, but it is, it's not letting me do it. Let's try to do it from the Zeroda as well. Sorry. We wanted to convert. We'll try to convert only 25. It's not letting me do from Zeroda as well, right? So for, I've seen this, a lot of people complaining about, okay, it doesn't work. Uh, some of the position got converted, half of it didn't get converted. There's nothing special that we can do if, if from the web also, it is not letting you convert, right? So I hope that answers some of the questions. I think yesterday, day before yesterday, I got a lot of queries saying that, okay, your conversion doesn't work. The conversion will work if Zeroda allows us. The conversion will not work if Zeroda doesn't allow us. End of the day, it is the broker who is allowing and disallowing. We are a provider on top of the broker. Right? Uh, it's nothing else. So it's not letting me do any of these calls or puts to NRML. So a way to fix this would be either we square off another 20. Okay, so that's that converts the that that covers the. Okay, I'm gonna uh just convert uh, this back yeah i'm going to take a break and i'll try to convert this position back i'm going to just exit all this it's okay let's have exited on this okay so this is where it's not going to let you do because it needs a minimum quantity of so and so so we'll, we'll look into that
that i'll come back and do it the second let's go back to the last one is going to paper trade right? so a lot of times we have this notion of okay what if i had stayed in this position right? you have the option to convert your existing open positions by squaring them off and converting them into a paper trade now in a paper trade you will then try out you can try out all the automation you can try everything right on a paper trade it's not going to impact your position open position so it's a two step process when you click on convert to paper trade you're basically telling system so i'm going to just take a paper trade here oh i okay i can't take a paper trade and show convert to paper trade i'll have to do it uh, through an open position but i'll show that in in another